before all done. It's a freezing cold day outside, so we are going to do some enrichment stuff inside now this afternoon to keep the puppies entertained. So um, the miniature schnauzer owners have expressed to me a couple of times that the pups are quite competitive siblings. Um, so this little exercise is helping them work independently without becoming overly jealous of what the other one's doing or what, they're, what they've got, what they're eating. So it's twofold. I'm going to have the pups do a station each. So the first station is a placement station, which Teddy's on just now. So I've got his bed right here and obviously I've made a small space so that I can block him to help him out if necessary. But really I'm just wanting him yeah. to be right there on his bed. Now from his bed he can also watch Millie, who will turn the camera around and I'll show you what she's up to. So Millie has got a couple of very simple problem solving stations here. Very simple, just soft toys because you know she's not very, very confident at what she's doing. She's getting the hang of it now. It's taken a couple of minutes of encouragement. Um, she knows the cue seek, so I'm using that to help her understand that there is something to look for. We've just got a wrapped up towel, which she's now starting to understand she has to kind of nose through or nose under her toys. And we've got one here, which makes quite a loud scraping noise, a silver bowl on tiles. And that's a little bit scary just to help her increase her confidence. She's not tackled it yet and that's okay. And so what we do is it means that while Teddy's on his place, he doesn't have to do anything. He just watches his sister snuffle around and she finds food. And he doesn't have to do anything to get a reward. He just stays on his place and she can work independently, but he can observe her. And that's it. Nice and simple. So when she works through these stations and finds all the treats, and Teddy and I hang out and we watch without interfering, then I'll swap them round and we'll see how they do in the opposite station. So while Millie is sniffing around and unravelling her towel, you can see that Teddy has very quickly got the idea. He just waits there and food just arrives. And that's all he has to do is just hang out with me and watch, which is the easiest thing in the world. He doesn't have to seek the way Millie's doing. He doesn't have to interfere with what she's doing. He just hangs out. And he's, although he's got a lead attached, that's just in case to help him out, but I don't have to, don't have to actually touch it. He understands what I've asked him to do now. And it pays out just to watch and observe and be patient. So yeah, it's good boy, isn't it? Nice little bit of placement training. How's it going? Did you find them all? You did well with that towel. Look, you got it unraveled in the end. Are you gonna tackle the noisy bowl? That was pretty brave. Not brave enough yet, that's all right. It is a very loud noise. We could maybe start with something that's not quite as scary, maybe plastic cup instead of the tin one, because it is quite a loud noise. And when you have sensitive dogs, um, obviously working with like noise boxes is another great game to play with them. Is that you? You convinced you found them all? Uh, just to help build up their confidence with uh, different kinds of inanimate objects all piled together that clang or make noise. You did very well, Munchkin. So she's got the idea now. She's even sniffing all around to make sure she hasn't missed anything rather than just staring at me to deliver treats. Very good. Come on. Down here, babe. Good girl. Is that you? Are you done? I think you are done. Okay, so if we would like one treat, how would we get it? Good. Paws on the ground is a good start. Are you ready? She's having a sniff. That's okay. I'll wait till she's ready. Okay, Millie. Ready? Touch. Yes. Good girl. Well done. And now I can swap you around. So when you're starting off with games like this, the dogs are, it's not that they can't do it or that they're being obstinate or anything like that, nothing like that. He just doesn't really understand the game. So good boy. So every time he makes an effort to go and look and sniff and seek out, there's just treats hidden under all these toys. Then he's rewarded, of course, by me praising him and encouraging him. Yes, good boy. But there is stuff to find. But in addition to that, the behaviour of seeking is reinforced by him actually finding the treats. Good boy. 
So just a little bit of patience in waiting. Sometimes if dogs are really confused, you can get up and you can point it out just to encourage them, just to get them started and get them going. So they need a little bit more hands-on involvement. Good lad. I don't mind if he keeps checking in, but the food's not coming from me just now. It's coming from the stations. We just take our time to figure it out. And meanwhile, so meanwhile, little miss is now on her place and now she gets to watch her brother and all she has to do is wait there and the treats arrive on the place that I would like her to be and we just watch her brother go around the stations, eat his treats, do his searching and I just reinforce her waiting. So it's basically a durational wait on a certain place which I've asked her to be on which is for bed and that's where the treats are going to arrive. So she comes towards me and tries to get the treats from my hand or the bowl. We just do Zen treat and the treats are just removed. That's not where they're coming from. Right now, they're on her bed, aren't they? So if she steps off like she's done just now because I've been talking, understandable, on the bed. Mm-mm, on the bed. Yes, good girl. I want to cuddle her towards her bed. I can lure her a little bit. No, 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 no. It's just a little bit of patience as always. There we go. Ta-da! And I'll make sure that while she's on her bed, I'll pay out. Good girl. Well done. Hi. And I'll just make sure that um, the time that I'm asking her to be on there for is what she can handle. You can draw out that duration um, over many sessions, but to begin with, yeah, just a couple of seconds might be all she can do right now. Good girl. That's exactly what I wanted. Yes, good girl. So placement training is just a reward nothing game. Just as long as she's on the place I've asked her to be on, doesn't have to do anything but be there and the food just arrives. Oh, well Meanwhile, we'll see how her brother's getting on. Good. So he needed a little bit of encouragement to look under the toys. And as I said, that's totally fine when you start a game like this. They don't know automatically that that's what they've to do. So just a little bit of help. And he's off. Oh, is he going to tackle the noisy bowl? Not yet. Not quite confident enough yet. That's okay. So he's used to the treats coming from me, so it is encouraging a little bit more independence. No, it just takes, yes, good boy. Let me just take a little bit of time. Good boy. Yes, well done. Nice. Good. Seek, seek, seek. Yes, good boy. Nice. Oh, we're getting somewhere. Good boy. So it was a fun and interesting uh, exercise for them to do, to do the two stations with two dogs. The progression would be, of course, um, as the pups start to understand the game more, is to make it harder and by that I mean that whoever is doing the durational weight, the placement training, um, to, to obviously be waiting for longer periods of time without the reinforcement arriving. So the rate of reward would drop um, and then that would increase their impulse control or the need for them to have the impulse control as they hold their place whilst the other one is working on the stations and sniffing and seeking and finding the treats to not break the position and go down there and try and get involved and try and muscle in on the others um, time on the stations um, and for the dog that is working on the stations those stations could become more complicated they can as they understand different well the, the actual individual different stations what's involved in them so you could have things like slow feeders you could have the towels could be more complicated the way you wrap them and tie them up and stuff if you you know into your DIY 
<laughs> it's problem solving toys. You've got wobble kongs, you have stuff kongs, you know, it's just the snuffle mats. It's kind of endless with the enrichment toys that you can buy. So you can increase the difficulty of each station as well. So that's how you would you could progress that game. Another way of progressing that game would be where I was sitting was in order to aid whatever pup um, was on the place that they didn't break their position, either by just oh, put my hand across and block them and then reinforcing them being back on the bed. Or I did have the lead in case um, they did get away from me and I had to step up and go and get them and bring them back to their bed. Um, you know, all of which wouldn't wouldn't be punitive. It's just to help them out that I've asked you to be here and that's where the reinforcement's gonna arrive. So I didn't have to do that with either, either of them. Um, they, they got it really quickly. Oh, I've just sat here and food just arrives and I just watch my sister or my brother work and food just arrives. So they got that really quick. But that is a way to progress it. So if my if I move position as well, so then it would be a durational weight in place with me, the handler, being at a distance. So that would be much more tempting for whoever's on the placement um, bed to, to break position, basically, and go and try and muscle in on the uh, the stations and the treats so very different ways you could you could progress that game so directly after the game we went outside the pups were a little bit excited because they knew the buffet was open um, and they you know they were they were ready to, to do some more work so we worked through a little bit of excited jumping um, and once we had four on the floor we then started some loose lead walking exercise so it was a really nice that game in general was a really really nice way to warm them up um, to then move on to other training as well so it's you know nice free work I am involved but you know it was in encouraging a little bit of independence um, it was working on the station especially the pup that whatever whatever pup was working on the stations the problem solving stations um, they were obviously working away from you I wasn't as involved to begin with as I said in the videos I'd have to encourage them maybe even point out or maybe even you know like pat the toy a little bit to encourage them to look but eventually they're working more independently from you which is nice but so after our uh, time with the two challenging stations two very different challenging stations both involving frustration tolerance for seeking out the treats uh, with the problem solving toys or you know uh, impulse control for wh whatever pup was waiting on the placement bed um, that's all good we went outside we did our you know was the four on the floor we did loose lead walking and then after that this is what we have nice happy sleepy puppies and that's without walking you know 10k <laughs> but it's important to know um so this game um is based off of a really really good challenge uh from emma of lighten up dog training which many of people know very well uh really respected behaviorist um so the important thing to know is that for some dogs doing this game it is actually something that can hype them up get them very excited. Uh, my pug, Freddy, for example, is a great example of this, playing the five station game. I didn't do it with other dogs in the room where they had to do a placement, but you know I could introduce that. But for Freddy, just doing the problem solving stations alone, because he loves food, he's very excited by food, he's very aroused by food. Um, so for him, playing that game, it doesn't tire him out. It actually has the opposite effect and gets him all wound up so we would have to do something else afterwards in order to ooh, start coming down the other side so for some games for some dogs sorry um, playing that kind of station game is tiring enough you know the, the seeking and the searching and the sniffing and the thinking and everything that goes along with it, it can be calming and it can be tiresome. Um, but for other dogs, it's going to actually have the opposite effect and get them all riled and, you know, what are we doing next? Let's do more. So it's definitely worth experimenting with your own dog to see which which side of the coin or are they somewhere in the middle? It's always a sliding scale. Every dog is different. Um, but it's 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 always worth doing with your dog to see what their how they feel about it and how their brain works. It's it's always an interesting thing. But for these guys, as I say, after that, 
and then some loose leaf walking, uh, even some decompression stuff, just throwing toys about or playing or having a cuddle. Um, and then we come back inside and we're perfectly happy and perfectly sleepy <laughs> and ready to have a nice cozy evening out from the in from the cold, sorry. <laughs> Oh, so just a little fun video, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Give you some ideas for something to do in the winter months with your dogs. <laughs>